Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have back with us Daryl Horton, who's the president of DL Horton Advisors, discussing a college savings plan. Daryl, welcome back to the program. Oh, thank you so much, Mike, for having me. You know, when we see this topic of college savings plan, I think that some people or parents uh, stomach start to churn and you have people that um, have a, you know, they, they get notified that they're expecting a baby and they start planning right then. And they have some people that are like, oh, um, you, you just turned the tassel on your high school graduation. I guess we ought to start thinking about college now, right? So uh, right. Both, both ends of the spectrum. So uh, let's, let's dive right in. Um, what are some of the main things? that you advise your clients on regarding a college savings plan? Well, there's a couple of programs that I advise my clients uh, regarding college. And, you know, keep in mind, I've uh, supported my daughter through college, and she graduated at uh, Pepperdine University University with a BA. And, Mike, it was just, wow, it was just so expensive, Yeah, uh, 55000 oh. uh per year. And, and it's like, wow, how do you finance that? So the purpose of this is to kind of, you know, give your, their audience a heads up on what to do. And in my case, you know, we, we had maybe a, a few years to really get those funds together. And it was just like, wow. <laughs> and you're like, maybe I should have started a little bit earlier, you know. I mean, you never start early enough. That's right. I mean, as soon as uh, you have your, your child, you should start um, savings. And a couple of programs to do that. One is the uh, 529 plan, which is a very good plan, whereas uh, you can uh, put monies into uh, a 529 plan for your uh, kids' college funding. And the good part about that is that uh, it's, it's, uh, you could take it off your taxes, tax deductible, uh -huh. and you can um, contribute up to 16000 uh, per year or either 32000 um per couple. So you can just write that off your taxes and uh, you can con contribute to that yearly. And that will help you out as uh, far as uh, those uh, expensive uh, yeah. college tuitions. You know, so there are some advantages and disadvantages of it. I mean, you can fast track that. You can do contributions over five-year plan and and you can uh, contribute up to 160000 uh for that plan. And it's also you can deduct uh, $2,500 off your um, student loan interest. So, um, you know, so those are some good benefits uh, yeah. for that plan. However, <laughs> some of the drawbacks of that may be, well, what if your, your kid get uh, a full scholarship? You know, and, and a lot of athletes and just Ooh, yeah. brilliant students are getting that. Because you might so have started a 529 this, really early, you know, like I took I took old Daryl's advice, and I started early, and then years down the road, my child is really excelling in academics, athletics, whatever, and now all this money is sitting in this account. What do I do? Well, that's the problem. So it has yeah. to be a qualified event, you know, meaning okay. uh, tuition or, or campus, uh, exp expenses for – uh, living. Uh, if you don't use those expenses, uh, what happens is you have that money there, and and then if you start to uh, withdraw that money, then of course you you penalize for it. You yeah. get ten percent uh, early withdrawal penalty, and then also it becomes a tax um, event. So um, those are some of the drawbacks that my clients go through. Like, hey, we you know we we. You know, we did the right thing, but, boo, you know, what do we do with all this finance, you know? And yeah. now we have to pay taxes and uh, on this funding and so forth and so on. And uh, so it can be – it's not for everyone, but it can help – it definitely can help out your uh, your students. And, and with that being said, there are um, a phase-out as far as the, uh, the IRS is concerned. Well, if you make a, over one hundred seventy-five thousand 
dollars per year, which a lot of my clients do, then you, you don't qualify that for that tax deduction. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I mean, makes, let's, let's even pause right there because I think a lot of people hear that, uh, and, and I see the TV uh, commercials. 529, 529, good. And and you've touched on a couple of the benefits, but knowing your own personal situation, working with someone like Daryl, he can advise you and say, listen, um, you told me you made X and it's well over the limit here. So the tax deductible, while that sounds fine and dandy, you're not going to get that benefit. And what exactly. if? What if your child? Now, you know, we never know. Your child's 8, 10, whatever. We don't know if they're going to get scholarship. But, you know, some of these parents, you, you see these TV shows and these reality shows, and, and it's like they devote their whole life into making my student the next whatever, Tom Brady or whatever the case is. So if you feel like maybe there's a chance for scholarship, maybe possibly a 529 is not the best choice for you. Exactly. And, and now what life insurance plays in this is that uh, it's a win-win situation with uh, life life insurance. And a lot of my clients are aware of this, and many of them aren't. So if you were to uh, do the same amount of contributions to a life insurance plan, it, that you would have well over 50000 or or 100000 or or a couple of hundred thousand uh, worth of cash value in your child's uh, insurance policy. And the thing about it, advantages of it is that, okay, well, my, my, my kid is just super brilliant, an outstanding athlete, full ride through college. Now, hey, I, I put the monies in an insurance plan, so now I have cash value to do with it whatever I see fit to yeah. do with it. You yeah. know, uh, you're in my case with my daughter, you know, going to school in Pepperdine and it, it was a point that she needed a car. Right. <laughs> and, you know, at the time, you know, yes, you know, and, and kids need automobiles and, and, or, you know, other things and, and food and groceries and so forth. Yeah. So, you know, there are still expenses, even if yeah. your, your kid get a full scholarship, you yes. know? So, what you could do with a life insurance policy is boom, you, you need a, a car, you know, you, transportation, no problem. Boom. You know, you just pull it out your cash, uh, pull it out your insurance policy and there's the uh, funds for, uh, and now is for that, the, for the is new that vehicle. considered like you were saying before, is that considered a tax event where now you got the IRS knocking on your door going, you better pay taxes on that. Mike, I'm glad you asked that question. No, it isn't. It is not a tax event. And that's what makes it so much more attractive uh, than a 529 plan where you can pull these monies out and there, there's no taxes on it. There's no penalties uh, with that. And you can do whatever that you see fit for your kid at that time. And, 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 and so, for instance, you think about like your example about a car. Uh, well, first of all, probably most of the time, you're not going to go buy that $1,000 junker. You're going to want something that's pretty sweet. Now, whatever price point that is, you know, your option is either pay cash, and if that's not an option, you're going to go to finance it at a bank or whatever, or go to your own bank, your own source, and like you just said, um, get it from your cash value or borrow it from your own policy. So those are some, you know, the obvious choices there. Um, and then let's kind of continue down that thought process. What if, what if, you know, those kinds of things like car and maybe some living expenses, but let's just say that the child now is done college and there's still some funds left in that account. Wh what do you do with that? Great question. Well, a lot of my clients use that for, to give their kids down payment for a car. Or, or a down payment for a house. Yeah, nice. Yeah, exactly. For I mean, I have so many uh, clients like, hey, you know, um, my parents gave me a head start, and I want to do the same thing yeah. for, for my kids. You know, uh, the housing market. We all know what I said. Uh, no matter where you where you live, uh, and especially in Southern California or other places, East Coast, so forth. It's just incredible amount of uh, money to uh, put down for. For a home, and so just imagine that uh, 
you know, you've been doing this for your, your, your child for 20 years or, or 15, 20, 30 years. And then, you know, to come to, and tell your child, like, hey, this is what I've been doing for you all throughout your life. Here's a gift of $60,000 for your down payment, yeah. 100000 whatever it is. You know, how amazing and gratitude gratification would that be yeah. for your child yeah you know? uh to get that head start now you know that's the quickest way to wealth is is uh property uh now i have a home and you helped me start it yeah and just imagine that okay then it also wedding right <laughs> oh my word yeah, I, 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 I have i have a daughter so hey i'm just like oh well, got, okay let, let me say I've got three daughters, so let's not even start oh! talking about <laughs> And they're uh, oh, 19, man. And they're 19, 21, and 23, so I've got those wedding bells oh, wow. in the back of my head. So you're right. Oh, uh, brother. Doesn't the word legacy start coming into cl- uh, clarity here? You're, you're planning on things way back in the day for college, and, and maybe you needed this life insurance policy contract for college. Good. But you're building that legacy. And one of the biggest gifts we can give uh, our kids as a parent is that head start, you know, foot in the right direction legacy into life because I don't want them to be a statistic like I read in the news about, oh, the average college student has a trillion gillion dollars in student loans. I don't want that. So you're exactly. you're not just going, I have this financial vehicle called this life insurance contract. I can teach you how to use it creatively really well, but you're actually giving a gift to your clients to help them give a gift to their family in many capacities in the form of a legacy. Exactly, Mike. Uh, it just, I mean, it's just so great to have this asset and this tax-free asset. Yeah. You know, to, to give over to, to your, your kids and, and use it for yourself because the bottom line with life insurance is like, what is it, what's in it for me? Everybody wants to yeah. know what's in it for yeah. me. You know, why should I do this, right? Well, it makes great sense as far as a legacy, leaving a legacy. It makes great sense as far as taxes is concerned. And, you know, it's just the right thing to do. I mean, you know, at some point in time, <laughs> You know, we all go through transitions, and we all, you know, going to get called to the good Lord, and and uh, you know, there's after benefits, you know, and then there's living benefits right yeah. now. So what you do now is like, hey, okay, weddings now are fifty grand, hundred fifty thousand dollars or more easily for a wedding. So so are you going to you know pull out from your savings, your four hundred one k or or leverage your real estate to pay for all this when you have this vehicle, right. this life insurance vehicle that can pay for all that. You just pull that cash value out. You're still getting, your account is still getting credited 5% or 10% to your principal. Yeah. This is just a win-win situation. I'm just thankful for you that you've given me the platform to yeah. to share this because you no one that. shared it with me. I had to go through go go through the hard way, right? Figure it out. Well, it's, you know, it reminds me what you just said about the old uh, saying. You know, it's a hot day. I sure wish I had some shade tree here. In and you know, <laughs> the best time to have planted it was thirty years ago, so that right now I could have a shade tree. Well, guess when the next best time to have planted a tree now. So someone might be listening to this going, this is all new to me, and man, uh, I've lost five, ten years because I could have done this a long time ago. Well, the best, next best time to start this is now, so get with Daryl. Um, but it makes me think of something here, Daryl, and, and this is where I want to kind of you know, maybe wrap up this thought process is I think a lot of people hear the word life insurance, and they think of old school and like, oh, don't get insurance. You don't need it because, well, you brought up a, a word that I want to tie into, which is, um, you know, oh, you, you talk about the death benefit. That's what you need insurance for, right? right. Well, yeah, sure. Right. But yeah. maybe yeah. these things that you're mentioning are really powerful living benefits. So talk about some of the misconceptions people have of life insurance and where where you can show them the benefits. Well, Mike, you know, people say life insurance, oh, I got to be dead. No, you know, <laughs> it's, it's living, you, you call, it's living benefits, you know, why wait till you, you passed on? Yeah, you know, you want to leave a nice legacy, financial legacy for your uh, family. However, you know, you're here, you use these benefits. So yeah. some of the benefits is, uh, you know, what we talked about is uh, tax-free 
there's a tax fee death benefit, you know, um, staying out of probate, right? You know, um, where the, uh, your beneficiaries are clear, everybody knows what they're going to get and you don't have to go through the course to get this resolved. It's the insurance companies, uh, you know, whoever your beneficiaries are, boom, this is what it is. It keeps you out of probate. Real simple. Another thing as far as living benefits is, um, is the lowest uh, interest rates. Uh, well, I'm sorry, the lowest uh, insurance rates, you know, that, oh, you, yeah. that you can get. Right. You know, as we get older, you know, sometimes we, you know, we develop uh, chronic illnesses and, you know, diabetes or uh, lupus or other things. And these are some of the reasons why we want to get life insurance now so we can make sure that we insure a bow. Yeah. And then one of the, uh, the, the most important things, again, like is leveraging your portfolio, you know, by having a tax-free asset like life insurance. I mean, this one, I don't know if you've ever been divorced or if you go through a divorce and, and the first thing, that, one of the things that the attorneys are asking for, what's your assets, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, life insurance is one of the uh, assets, you know, and then you can transfer ownership of this asset. You know, you can, um, you know, transfer it to uh, a spouse or uh, you can transfer it to a grandpa, uh, uh, your parents or a child, so it's transferable uh, in many ways, you know, these, these assets. And then as far as, uh, again, as far as living, is that you use these assets to leverage the, your whole portfolio, meaning that if the market is down, okay, the market is down. We know it's up and it's down. However, you know, you have this, this uh, cash that's available for you in your, in your um benefit that you can just use that to finance another business or finance your current business or yeah. open a new business or buy that uh, addition to your home or, or build something additional to your home or buy more real estate. A lot of my clients are using life insurance just to leverage themselves. And as far as creditors, in most states, it's protected from uh, your creditors. So, I mean, God forbid you have a bad year, you know, hey, you have this asset, okay, you know, they may have uh, leveraged you, your creditors may have leveraged all your other assets, but you have, in, in, in many cases, life insurance that, boom, okay, well, all right, well, you know, I have to pay these penalties and that, boom, but I have life insurance, I can pull that out. So you're your own banker. Yeah. That, you know, you use that. Yeah. You, you, Use that to finance yourself. And then also, hey, what if your credit goes bad? You know, your, your credit rating goes bad. Now, who's going to loan you 500 k or, or 200 k or even 2000 you know, if it's really right. bad, right? right. <laughs> you know, no problem. Okay, I pull a, I pull a cash value out of my uh, life insurance policy and use that, you know, to finance myself. Yeah. So. It's just so many ways that you can do use your uh, life insurance policy. In addition to that, what if you get sick, right? You have a chronic illness or a terminal illness. Now, what's going to happen? You know, uh, do you have to leverage, you know, your equity in your house? Yeah. You know, do you if have to sell your out, Yeah, you, they're going to come after something. So I think the key word you're mentioning over and over is asset, asset, asset. And people don't think of life insurance as an asset. And right. They don't. Many, many people do. And this is so interesting, you know, like I could be talking to the most educated person. They may not even understand it. I can be talking to someone uh, that maybe just, you know, finished high school and, and may not understand it. But it seems like when I speak to my wealthy clients, they all understand it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but that's just my experience. It's like all my affluent clients and they really understand what life insurance does and many of them I'm talking about wealthy like 500 million dollars million a hundred million dollars worth of assets uh, they're using life insurance to leverage their whole estate to keep well, I don't know out of probate. I, if I heard this from you last time or whether I just have heard it you know reading up in the industry but isn't it true that 
um, life insurance have been used like this for decades and hundreds of years, but um, large corporations and banks have historically put their money in life insurance contracts. And it's kind of like their little little secret weapon there. And, and so, yeah, affluent people might hear this and go, I get it, but it's not some new thing. It's like, well, if the banks are putting their money in life insurance for protected growth, maybe that's a good idea for me as well. Exactly, Mike. That is 100% true. You know, banks and and other large industries, especially uh, business owners and corporations, are using life insurance. They've been using it for hundreds of years to yeah. to leverage themselves. And um, you know, and it's all about education. You know, Wall Street has done a great job. And you know, hey, give your money to me. We <laughs> yeah. we we invest it. You know, and uh, and 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 they will lose your your money faster than you will. You know. Yeah. Could be. Uh, it, it could be in, in many cases. I mean, you know. Uh, you don't know. But but, but why don't why don't we, you take the, what they're actually telling you out of one side of their mouth and then they're doing something else? So why don't we follow what they're actually doing, which is putting their money in safe uh, vehicles? And I think you brought up some spectacular. Uh, points here. So let's just uh, do this, Daryl. If someone is listening to this going, I'm, let, let me see how this could work for my situation. What's the best way they can reach out and connect with you and learn more? Well, I could be reached at uh, dlhortonadvisors.com. And my email is daryl at dlhortonadvisors.com. We have uh, seasons seasoned people there that can help you with uh, over 40 years worth of experience health and helping everyday people, wealthy people, just those who want to learn more about leveraging their assets or either growing an asset. Excellent. That's the best way to contact me. I love it. Well, Daryl, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much, Mike. Have a blessed day. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.